this is this is the root of me. This is where I come from. This is my home, and it will always be my home. I can see everything from here, and it's not enough. The deficit of women has increased. And if you not change our whole scenario with regard to women, we will have a big problem. I would say they are doing too little too late. I try to adapt it everything in the beginning. It's not that easy. With summer less than a month away, 20-somethings on the Faroe Islands are having to face the largest decisions in their lives so far, where to pursue their professional and personal dreams. In the last five years, over 3,000 people under 25 have left. What sounds like a small number is a big issue in a country with less than 50,000 inhabitants. I see the same faces and the same places and it's just, it's the same thing every day. It's, it's, it is too small. And then I just feel like I can't breathe. I think there is a perception, well, I know there's a perception, at least from my research, amongst many young people that there are a lack of opportunities here, um, a lack of certainly career opportunities. These, these young people indicate a, a desire or almost like um, feel like it's a necessity to leave. And it's not only a problem for us, it's a problem for the whole Western society. Faroe Island is different in one way, and that is that we are located here in the middle of the North Atlantic. So when we are losing uh, people, we, we are not losing them from the rural areas into the capital. We lose them actually from the islands to another country. And that's a big difference. <laughs> I have applied to university in Bournemouth in England. My course starts um, at the first of September. I think it's hard. Uh, I, I don't. I can't imagine really how it will be. But quiet. That's one thing. <laughs> it would be quiet. Oh. <laughs> I always wanted to come back. Actually, I was five years in Denmark then. I came as soon as possible, as soon as, as I uh, finished school, I came back. Sometimes it goes, she said, that she don't come back. But I hope. I hope, really, because we need women, some pharaohs. As it's the women, especially, who do not return, there are about 1,700 less women than men living on the Faroe Islands today which foreshadows a major population decline of up to 11,000 people in the coming decades. It is, it is a, a male-dominated society, and we see that uh, in the, 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 the discourse in the media. We see that in terms of uh, who, um, who makes most of the decisions in the Faroe Islands, or many of them at, at least, in, in terms of uh, politics, in terms of top management, uh, in terms of the values that we hold. Everyone was raised on the same kind of mentality. Growing up, if you have a reputation, it doesn't go away because everyone knows and, and people don't forget. And that's annoying because you can't really make a new identity for yourself. I'm the good girl because I, I hadn't tasted alcohol until I was 18. And that's why I think people are so surprised when they see me working in a bar. And it's so strange because I'm the exact opposite of what they thought I was. <laughs> that's a lot to choose from. Huh? Have you tried this bread? No. Because <laughs> you change all the time. And, and the people here don't accept that. I think... Because I have such a passion for traveling, I think that sort of sparked the interest in me wanting to be someone that has some kind of significance in a hotel or a resort. Many of them are employed in um, so-called women's jobs or uh, women's uh, professions, such as uh, nursing, health workers, 
pedagogues, uh, sort of working with children, um, and, um, and teachers. If I had to stay here, I think I'd become a teacher, maybe work in kindergarten or something, but I don't think that would fulfill me though, because I would always have this, this dream or this longing to open my own hotel and that I never got to do that. That would sort of always be a hole in my heart. I took my education in Denmark uh, as a designer and um, then I moved back to Faroe Island and I needed to have uh, a job beside because there was no money in it in the beginning so I worked in a kindergarten as well so uh, financial it was very 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 hard. Mama. Basically by only advertising jobs that uh, that are part-time. It's actually the employer keeping women in a, a low-wage position. I'm working a dead-end job, well, two dead-end jobs, and that's not the life that I want, so for me to pursue a career in anything, I kind of have to leave. Today, the Faroese population crisis is not due to population totals that are getting drastically smaller. The issue is that the population totals are flatlining, with the remaining population that continues to age. But the issue is a long-term issue. Yes, we may have had population growth last year, and hopefully that will continue, but the concerns are based on a long-term skewedness of... Um, of the, of the gender ratio and, and the age proportions in society. Faroese women have the most children per head uh, in Europe. However, uh, there's not enough women to give birth. Uh, so in the next 40 years, uh, it's going to be a, a very serious issue for the Faroe Islands. And the question is how, how are we going to um, manage our welfare system? Um, keep it to a certain level that people will still thrive here and want to live here. It is a big issue and it's an important issue and we need to find uh, ways and, 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 and work uh, and, and do things different so we can get this ladies back again. And therefore it's quite good that we are able to find other people which are interested in living in the Faroe Island. If one does have a female deficit then there's a male surplus and if these men want to marry and the Faroese women aren't there, well, it's, it's, it's probably um, a kind of inevitable solution that, well, in, the, in that case, then they marry foreign women. Lai, how did you got to? How did you came to the Faroes? <laughs> I took the flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, me a well, mama jahe, well. Uh, I'm from Burma. Oh. Then I met Fritz. Oh. The children who, who, who comes out of these marriages, they, they are very well integrated and they are, 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 are fairly ways from day one. But I think the problem is that the, the, the women, I think some of them have problems to be integrated. <laughs> I try to adapt it everything in the beginning. It's, it's not that easy. I just came from a uh, hotel industry. I'm working at the Edgar at the sushi restaurant. Some women, uh, before they came into this island, they have very good position back in their countries and you know, good education in their country. But when they came in here, nothing. We start from zero many Faroese politicians don't seem quite to understand how challenging it is to come to um, the Faroe Islands. We haven't been good enough to that, I must say, uh, because we, as I said to you, we haven't had any integration policy. Yeah. We are at present structuring a new um, integration law, which will be ready for the, for the autumn here this year. For example, when the um, proposal for the integration policy was debated in the parliament, I wouldn't say that all the politicians had this view, but the overall discourse and the overall feeling I think that I was left with was 
yes, that's fine. We have foreign people come here. Yeah, let's uh, treat them well and teach them the language, but we're not spending any money of it on it. And we don't want them coming here and taking from our own. I don't really feel, feel like I am total 100% Faroese lady. I don't. But I'm part of it. And I think also they will be a part of, 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 of our solution to how we can uh, change things. But, but there's no doubt uh, if we shall help people to come back to the Faroe Islands in the way we want it, we definitely need to make the society uh, in many ways better than it is today. So. I think ambitious girls usually leave because they don't find that they can do what they want here. So that's why I want to leave, at least. <laughs> you would need to, to sacrifice a lot for it to happen. I have my own uh, design company all over the world. I was giving birth to my oldest son, and my husband really would like to go back to the Faroe Islands. So I just jumped into it. And it was very, very hard for me in the first two years. There was no design environment and uh, nobody to talk to how to open your own uh, company. Uh, a lot of uh, young women stayed in, uh, in Denmark because of those things. I knew. You need to have it in your, in your blood to uh, make your own company and uh, also that they can see uh, it was the possibility uh, that they could see something uh, successful and uh, if it's not a design it can go in the other direction they could see and hear the story that uh, we can do the things here eh? if i'm looking back and see today it's uh, it's a good thing that happened i, I good idea i did it mm -hmm. I think it's very important for us to, to build up our, our university in such a way that we have more young people longer in our islands. Because uh, it seems like uh, in Faroe Island and elsewhere, it is the girls who are, who are choosing the university degrees more than the men. When you live here, you have like five possibilities to choose from of studies. And I didn't want to do any of those. So I was like, well, I kind of have to leave if I'm going to study what I want to. If I were the young Faroese girl I, 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 uh, who grew up here in this, this island, I would do the same. I would support my daughter. I would, I would let her go, surely. But somehow they're going to come back. We made a plan with 37 steps of how we get people back to, the, to, to these islands. And we, have, we have not a big focus on the challenge, I would say. I think my ministry are not able to put more effort into this one at present time. In the Faroe Islands, it's very difficult to think uh, long term. When you are hunting, it's now. You must get it now, the fish, because you don't know this, if it's there tomorrow. And you can see it in the politics also. Politicians cannot solve everything. You need to be a, a two ways thing, you know. The people themselves also are interested to come back here and do some things for the society. Yeah? It seems like we have a society now which is more a, a, a taker than a maker society. Yeah? The vision that I have in mind for the pharaohs, if I were to come back, I would create a place for maybe a specifically young people to stay that wasn't too expensive. It's never good for a society that people leave the society. We need all those people to be here and to uh, create something from, you, from, your, uh, from your roots and that's, that's uh, a future, I believe, yeah. So I want to be the one to create it, but maybe I'll, I'll get someone else to manage it once it's up and running. I wish that we were bigger and we had more resources so we could keep the people here because I think it's really sad that they have to leave to pursue their dreams and maybe never come back.